that we could stand in front of you in this condition. My God! Many will take advantage of us in this condition, but God, I know that you will put us back together with your tender mercies and your love. We stand before you vulnerable to bless your holy name. The author and the finisher we glorify you, Father. Praise your holy name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Hey, God. Hey, God, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. And we'll move right along. Thank you, Jesus.
people say. <laughs> Y'all better come on. What you say? While I was down on my knees praying, something got a hold of me. Help, ba, 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 hey! Y'all gonna have to leave that alone. Leave that alone. And they say I need double knee replacement. That's what they say. But I serve a remarkable God. I'm going to introduce y'all some more power. Oh, oh, this woman is packing with some power. Oh, <laughs> see, I had to come up here like this. Because, baby, it's a fire coming behind me. Women, I want to welcome you one more time to the conference, Women's Conference 2022. Our theme is what? Remarkable. Come on. We're going to bring to you none other than Evangelist Laverne Brown. Come on, give him glory. Think about your story and give him glory. Yay! Hallelujah to God. Think about how remarkable he's been to you. Not just yesterday, but all the days of your life. We used to say my cotton-picking life, but now What a wonderful way to welcome the presence of the Lord. To say thank you, God, for being here. Not only for you being here, but thank you, God, because I'm here. Glory to God. Could have been something else, but it's not that. It is what it is. Give him a praise for it is what it is. Bless his holy name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I couldn't wait for this. I've been so in such anticipation and I've been doing a remote assignment and so I say to the women and the staff that have been picking up, amen, and helping me and pushing me and getting in the way for me, I appreciate you so, so, so much and you ought to give yourself a hand right now for talking to me and walking me through. Glory to God, because you know I don't drop stuff. I just like, okay, I hope you got the assignment. We moving. Yea, bless the Lord. We do this all the time. We do this every Sunday, but it's just that when it's a special time set aside for the women of God, amen, it makes a big difference. And we just thank God for the conference. We've been trying to do this for the last four years, almost, almost eight years, because the Lord had told me to stop it a while back and I did exactly what he said and now I see why he told me to stop it amen but for those of you that do not know the comfort women's conference is a branch ministry of the comfort women's collective amen which is a conglomerate of ministers amen that are set aside and invested somebody say invested that's why the Lord told me to stop the last one because I was the only one investing. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. I was investing my money, my time, and the Lord had to stop me and say, this is futile because it is not dealing with a cause. And that is the whole theme of the Comfort Women's Collective. There is a cause. Somebody has to lead it. Somebody has to help it. And there's somebody in higher places that we are that can nail some things, that can get some things changed and get some things put in place. Amen. Not just for us, but for anyone at large, women, men, 
children, youth, amen, is broader than us because behind every woman there is a man. Whether you like him or not, somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Whether he's a crazy man or a good man or a bad man, you may have a son, you may have a daughter, you got a cousin, you got an uncle, you got all of these people that are behind you. And we minister to them too. Through you. And so we need to take it further and not just listen and not just say, okay, whatever, we'll pray about it. No. We need to do something about some things, amen. We need to do something about some things and we not need to be afraid of it. But we serve a mighty, mighty, mighty God. And we'll talk about the vision later, amen. But we're going to worship the Lord because we've already praised him, amen. And we know that there is nobody greater than the Lord our God. It has been proven time and time again. No matter how many are against God, look at your neighbor and say, I'm not one of them. Hallelujah, I still have faith in my God. So put your hands together and praise the Lord. Tyshar is going to minister nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, saints. I'm actually going to minister nobody like you. But nobody greater is going to come a little bit later. Amen. How many of you know that there's nobody like the Lord? Hallelujah. I searched high and I looked low. And I don't find nobody like him. Hallelujah. 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 All the people that I've tried to depend on in all these years, and I had the one and only true and living God, hallelujah, that I can stand on his firm foundation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There's no one like you, Lord. Bless the name of God today. Glorify your name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you honor, God. Excellent is your name. Your name is strength. Your name is power. A strong tower makes me say.
serve a God like this? Yes, Lord. Who would have served a God like this? Hey. Heal, provide, sustain. I just want us to go and greet our neighbors, ladies. Let's get to know each other by name. Amen. We're going to break up the same bread, eat the same bread today. So we might as well know each other. Amen. Hallelujah. Introduce yourself, amen, to your sisters and brothers. Glory to God. Glory to God. He's awesome. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? My Lord, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Did we get everybody? Did everybody get a hug? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, I tell you, ladies, God is with us today. God is with us today. I'm so excited. As we go further into our service today, ladies, I wanted to introduce, to introduce the uh, speaker of the hour, amen, this remarkable woman, as we know, amen, a woman who labors in the vineyards of the Lord. Hallelujah. With all her heart, all her mind, all her soul. A sold out vessel. Amen. Glory to God. A sold out vessel for the Lord. My Lord. A vessel of honor. Hallelujah. For the Lord to use in due season. I want to introduce to you, if you would please stand. Pastor Evangelist Laverne Brown. She don't like to be called First Lady, but today I'm calling her First Lady Pastor. Hallelujah! First Lady in our hearts. Thank you so much. Let's give the Lord a praise. Amen. He's an awesome God. I don't like to be called First Lady because uh, I might miss, I miss the mark every now and then. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I really don't. And, and, and I really don't like living up to that stigma. I really don't. Because the Father has to present me faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. So I might disappoint you, but I'm not going to disappoint him. Because he knows that before it's all over with, I'm going to be all right and I'm going to be made perfect. Come on and give God a shout in the house. Amen. Before we get started with the word of God, and my husband's motioning to me, and I'm getting ready to motion back to him to come. Yes, he wants to come. He, he just does not want to make sure I'm comfortable here, but I want to introduce the angel of this house and allow him to come and to greet. Don't do that, Pastor. Come on now. Amen. Let's give God a praise for him. Amen. He loves coming to the women's gatherings because he gets his too. Amen. Let's say praise the Lord to Pastor DJ as he greets us, and then we'll go right to the word. Praise the Lord. Clap your hands and love the Lord in the house. David said, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I am truly enjoying myself. Every women's conference, somewhere, somehow, I get caught up all in it. Mm. Woo, thank you. I'm telling you, it's just blessing my heart already. Amen. So I had to kind of go over in the corner so y'all wouldn't see the tears flowing but when I read yeah yeah it hurt but it don't hurt no more I said Lord have mercy so you think about a lot of things that we've gone through come on that we never thought we'd get out of but then the Lord do a miracle in our life and totally change the, the history of our life come on Amen. And then we are identified as a person of persons that have been delivered. Come on. Amen. Some folks think you would never, ever, ever come out of what you're in. But God is faithful. Come on. Who promised? God has a covenant with us. So I, I don't, I don't want to take up any more time, but I, I, I'm so glad. I just kind of want to be a sponge in the back and, and just hear everything and, and, 
and so I can get restored myself, see? Amen. I'm not that type of brother where that, uh, you know, I'm so prideful that I can't shed a tear or, or uh, you know, receive what God is saying. Uh, that's why you be so blessed when you, uh, come on, y'all know, I know y'all like to do this. So. <laughs> Amen. But God bless you. And I, I thank God for this woman. She's been doing this for, we've been missed for 32 years. So you've been doing it about 32 years. And uh, each conference has been, uh, over the years, have been, have been nothing but an elevation in God. And so I want you to enjoy yourself and, and, and let God speak to you. We want you to leave this place and go home refreshed. Is that all right? God bless you. And I need you to stay right here because I need you to, amen. He, he, think, I, he, he think I bought him a boat or something. That's what he thinks. He thinks yeah, yeah, he thinks that. But I need you to get the... Um, he needs to put this up here just, 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 just a tad. And, uh, okay. Can it go up any higher? You ain't that tall. Well, I, I want it to be, I, I you know. Can we get in trouble? We don't want to, yeah. Is that, that's it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Y'all know I, I still got a fight in me, but I have to, I, I, I'm trying to be, uh, she ain't there yet. I, I'm, I'm wanting to, I need you to change this so that I can see the Bible so I can read the scriptures. Amen. But nonetheless, uh, we thank God for our pastor. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, I wanted to, while he's getting that uh, set up for me, I just need a side by side, the Bible and the the message. Uh, But um, you'll see a number of women here uh, that are draped with these statement t-shirts. And these particular statements are applicable to them and this is what they gave me and and um for them uh pertaining to their life some others i uh had to um what i did was i just created that statement for them in particular and so we have these statement t-shirts and these t-shirts are going to be made available after the conference you can order your own you can do make a statement on it if you want to and some of you we do have Uh, individuals here that do not have uh, any shirts on we do have some extra shirts and so if your size is here uh, I don't know how many other people are coming here but we want to make sure that you do get a t-shirt I know that's a a, a medium over there Uh, uh, sister Tamika (laughs) amen little small one amen and but we do have extras and so we want to make sure that you have a shirt today before you leave Right after uh, we minister the word of God, we will make sure that that happens. And then we're going to go to lunch and um, we're going to come back and we're going to, he can't get it. And, and so, wait a minute, just leave that alone for you mess around. And, and yeah, and we, yeah, 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 come on. Mm-hmm, I thought you knew. Yeah, yeah, punch, yeah, punch that back up. Yeah, I'm just, tr- yes, you, you can't do it. Amen. But so that means you have to get the Bible so you can read it for me. Amen. Because I didn't remember it by heart. I used to be able, well, you used me, amen, so we even. Thank you, God. So if you could find your Bible or your laptop or something so that we can get the scriptures read. But nonetheless, we will, um, after the word of God, then we will um, go out and have lunch and then we'll come back. And then we are featuring this year uh, at the conference the Just Life, Just Life Talk Show, amen, which our hosts are uh, Minister Roxanne Ford. Please stand, and Tyshar is gone. She left out, amen, but they are our hosts for the talk show, and we have this every month, and we're, we're attempting to, they had to stop me because I like to, do every, I like to do things weekly because people need help weekly, amen. So we will be having it weekly at some point, not monthly. They're saying, well, mm-hmm, uh-huh, that, yeah, I know, yeah, but I, I need some help. Somebody say, I need some help in here. Amen. So if, we, if you are the type of person that loves to talk and you could talk with me, we can get on the live, the Just Life uh, talk show, and we could talk about some things. Amen. Because I believe that we're living in a time where uh, individuals need to hear something. We've heard so much other stuff, and especially coming out of the pandemic, our minds need to be regulated. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
our minds. Did you get the Bible? You got it? We're in Genesis chapter 16. Amen. And you don't have to rest on your feet again because we've been standing already. We know that our theme is entitled um, Remarkable. I saw him who saw me. And oftentimes, you know, before we get to that place where we say that we have truly encountered God, we have to go through some changes. And we have to go through some contradictions. There's a lot of things that go on. So, Pastor, if you could get that scripture for me and read uh, Genesis chapter 16. And I believe you're going to start at verse number, uh, start at verse number 10. Okay. Amen. Matter of fact, start and at verse number 7. I'm sorry. No problem. Uh, Genesis 16 and 7. Start at 7 verse. Mm -hmm. An angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of, a wa of water in the wilderness by the fountain in the way to shore. Mm -hmm. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, mm -hmm. whence camest thou? Whether would thou go? And she said, I flee from mm -hmm. the face of my mistress, Sarah. Tired of her. Mm, Sarah, yes. <laughs> and the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress mm. and submit thyself in, uh, under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear, bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord have heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man, his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord that spoke, uh, spake unto her, Thou God seest me. For she said, Have I also here looked after him that mm -hmm. seeth me? There it is. That's it? Amen. Okay. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her. After that conversation... Thou seest me, for she said, have I also here looked? Now this is a question she's asking herself, after him that seeth me. And we know that the theme is entitled Remarkable. I saw him who saw me. There are some times in our lives that we, um, again, are going through some trying times and this particular story we know it's about supposed to be about Sarah and Abraham but we are spotlighting Hagar today because Hagar is to me the outcast or the one that is not wanted and eventually rejected so when we come to this particular scenario in the Bible about Sarah and Abraham. Many of us know that this was before their names were changed. This was before Isaac was born, before the promise came to pass that the Lord had given on to Abraham or to Abram. And they were having complications in childbearing. Sarah was bearing and we know that whenever we're bearing or whenever we can't get something to happen that will cause us to have joy, it could be very miserable. It could be complicated. It can, it can just be grueling at times. And we come to the place where we ask ourselves, what's wrong with me and how come I can't do what it is that I would like to do Somebody say to bring joy to my soul. But it says in the scripture here that Sarah, it talks about her first and it says that she had a handmaid by the name of Hagar. And how Hagar got to or into the life of Abram and Sarah, she was part of a deal when Abraham and Sarah, Abram and Sarah were down at one of the Pharaoh's, in one of the Pharaoh's country. It said that the princes of Pharaoh saw Sarah and they praised her or they took her to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh wanted to have him as her 
as his maid, as his woman. He wanted to bring her in and look at your neighbor and say, know her. We know what that know her means without, uh, praise the Lord, there are some, some young ladies here. But he, he wanted to know her because she was very beautiful. But before it was all over with, they found out that Abram and Sarah were related. And the Pharaoh, you know, it was a whole bunch that went on inside of that Pharaoh's camp. And finally, he told Abram, you know what? You should have told me she was your wife. You could have gotten all of us killed. But the reason why the Lord uh, did what he did, he put boils on them and did some things uh, to their private. Somebody shout hallelujah to keep Sarah from getting pregnant. Because whenever you're barren, God is always going to put a stop to some things. Amen. Because that's not what he has planned for your life. Because she could have gone in there and she could have gotten pregnant by one of those servants of of Pharaoh's and but the Lord did not allow that to happen and so as a deal for Abram and Sarah to get out of there he gave them some goods and amongst those goods were some female servants some male servants some donkeys and you know sometimes you know people will just say look you need to get on out of my life because I'm not having a happy time so he gave them some servants some donkeys some camels and and some sheep and Hagar came with the package Amen. And so once they got back to uh, 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 Sarah and Abram's place, or when they got settled, when Abraham and Sarah got settled, Sarah began to wonder about her need or she could uh, about the fact that she could not bear any children and it said that she got into a conversation with Abram you know and, and, and began to talk about how the Lord was restraining her from bearing so she knew that it was the Lord's cause amen that's the reason why she could not bear any children when it's the Lord's cause there's nothing you can do about it I don't care what you say but with, with her smart she comes up with an alternative and gets into a conversation with Abram and said look here you know we got this maid Hagar here this handmaid now the handmaid was there to cook clean and and do all that other kind of stuff but nonetheless here Sarah gets this bright idea and says I want you to go in unto my maid so that I can obtain some children by her now we know that nowadays that is done through surrogacy and there is nobody touching nobody's body. But in this, it was somebody's touching somebody's body. Well, I wonder if Sarah went for a walk when it went down. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hey Amen. What, what, what do you do? <laughs> Can you imagine you done told your husband to go in there or your man to go in there and, and relate with somebody else? Where are you going? You going for a walk? What you gonna do? You gonna stand outside the door? I kind of think she probably took a long walk, Sister Roxanne, because I'm not gonna stand in here and, and I know you in there with my man. Now back in the day, that was an okay thing to do. We, we, you know, we, we think that that was all wrong, but back in that day, it was an okay thing to do. But Nowadays, I mean, it's still happening, and if you understand what I'm saying, but, but and it's not okay with some people. <laughs> some people don't mind having three or four. Y'all ain't gonna play church with me today, amen. They, they, they don't mind, amen, watching somebody do something with somebody. Y'all ain't gonna like me today. <laughs> But Sarah, I, I imagine that she went for a walk, Donald. <laughs> I, I can't take this, you know. I, I can't take this. But what gets me is that Abraham hearkened unto her voice. I mean, he didn't object. <laughs> he, he didn't have, I don't even think he had to contemplate. You know, and sometimes we say that women have authority over, over men like that. And, and, and you are, what do you call that? A chicken or a whatever you, what do you call it? A, 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 a man that just do anything that a woman say. You a punk. Are you, you, come on here. Y'all got your own word. Y'all saying it right now in your head. What is it? Talk back to me. He's whipped. He's weak. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> a jelly bag, you know. But 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 it was all right because of the purpose 
behind why she was asking him. And so he listened to his wife. He hearkened unto his wife. So this was not a moment of weakness that Abraham was having. This was a setup by his own wife. His wife was acting on impulse. And nowadays when we can't have any children, we, we decide to adopt or there's a black market and somebody can steal one for us. But this was an acceptable thing back in the day, and so we cannot assume that this was off limits for them. He listened. Adam listened to his wife and got us in a whole world full of trouble. Abram listened to his wife and he got his whole house in a, a world full of trouble. So what I'm saying is that sometimes, women, we can get our whole house in a world full of trouble. I know I'm right up in here because we don't think things through. We just do whatever comes to mind. This was her alternative. Even Pilate's wife told him, you need to leave Jesus alone because you're going to have some blood on your hands before it's all over with. And Pilate listened, amen, and he said, you know, the blood is not on my hands. So women, sometimes we can say some right things, but sometimes we need God to speak to us. He can speak to us in a dream. He can speak to us through a book. He can speak to us through a message. But we need to make sure that we have a clear direction. Because when it's too good to be true, I look at what happened to Hagar and how she had to comply uh, to these life arrangements. I'm going to be a handmaid. And I know she was probably kind of happy, I'm bubbly, because I'm getting out of Pharaoh's house and I, I'm going with, to live with the Israelites. And she was an Egyptian herself, so she was probably all happy and excited about going to live with them. You know how it is when somebody offers us something and at the onset we're just so onset, we're so excited about it. But we can't see around the corner, Sister Deb. <laughs> We can't see around the corner, but we're so excited. So I'm sure that once she got into that situation, it was okay for a minute. It says that Abraham had only been in the land of Canaan 10 years, and the Lord had promised him 10 years ago that he was going to have a promise. So again, this is what Sarah decides to do. Well, the promise is not here, so I'm going to take this little complying, vulnerable handmaid. And, you know, it doesn't tell us how old uh, uh, Hagar was, but in my mind, I, I believe she was an hourglass. I, I, I kind of believe that, 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 amen, she was beautiful and, and she was young and she was, she was vigorous. Well, bless God. She was younger than Sarah. And so that was some competition for Sarah. And so, but she took Hagar and gave her to her husband. She was impatient. She was tired of waiting on God. I don't know what kind of fire she was tried in before then, but this fire that's getting ready to come now, she ain't going to be able to deal with it. So she gives him Hagar. I don't know if Hagar's a virgin. Maybe she was, maybe she wasn't. I don't know. I know that when we're all growing up, when we get to the age of 12, we, we, we kind of think, or when that thing happens to us, bless God that, that amen, we know we, 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 we got to watch over our girls when that thing happens. Somebody shout hallelujah. And we even have to watch over them before that happens. You got to watch over your girls all the days of their life. So... I don't know if she was a virgin, but we know that she was an Egyptian. She was of another culture. We know that she didn't, she didn't have a choice in coming to that home. The home of her master and the home of her mistress. The relationship was different. It was a male master and a lady master. That's what mistress means. But it says, after he went in to Hagar, and as I said, I don't know where Sarah was when this going in was happening. Praise God. And I don't know how many times Abraham had visited with Hagar. You know, maybe she turned on the music, lit some candles. Ah, glory to God. Ain't nobody going to play with me today. 
Glory to God. Maybe, maybe I, I don't know. Uh, maybe, you know, she took off that smock and put on something else. And glory to God. And so their entanglement. was probably more than once because, you know, uh, sometimes we can get pregnant, boom, just like that because we're so fertile, but not always. So I'm, I'm just speculating about how many times, Tamika, did he, my God, go, you know, in, in other words, you know, when, when, when somebody goes in and takes up with somebody, that's the first thing you want to know. How many times did you go over that W's house? Y'all ain't going to play church with me. And where was I when all of this took place? Well, Hagar's name meant winch. That's what they called her. They called her a winch. Y'all was thinking that other thing. See, I wasn't even over in there. But it says that, I don't, I don't know how many times they did it, but, but, but she conceived. I mean, it wouldn't have been so bad, but it said that she conceived. She, she got pregnant. She was fertile. Her test was positive. Glory to God. She wasn't trying to play tricks with Abram. She wasn't trying to play tricks with Sarah because this is what you asked for. Glory to God. So don't come at me sideways when you see that I've gotten pregnant. So it said, but when she saw, Hagar saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. In other words, she began to get to a place where she resented Sarah because we, we really should have been best friends. We really should have had a different type of relationship. But now you have changed the relationship and I don't respect you no more. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First, I was looking up to you, Sarah, and now all of a sudden, amen, that I'm pregnant, now I'm looking at you another way. Now that I got your man, I got his attention, hallelujah, and I'm getting special treatment, amen, now I don't respect you one bit because the relationship has changed. And so how do you think Sarah feels, Sister Renita? Proverbs 30, 21 says, for there are three things that will disquiet the world. Three things that will cause an uproar. But then the wise man said, as a matter of fact, there are four which cannot be born. You can't handle it. And one of them is a hated or an odious woman <laughs> when, she was when she is married and a servant girl who takes the place of her master's wife. So now I'm in your place. I was on the outside looking in. Now you on the outside looking in. Now how about that? How do it feel? That will disquiet the earth. That will disquiet the whole neighborhood. <laughs> Amen. You got your text? Did you get your text? Yeah, she, yeah, she texted me today. Got four or five different text messages on there. She just told me to bring something by because she needs something to eat. I got to go by there. <laughs> I got I to go take care of her, Sarah. I got I to gotta, I gotta give, make sure that she is comfortable. Oh, my God. Or whenever they're both in the house, he's paying more attention to, to Hagar than he is to Sarah. Now you let my husband pay more attention to somebody in, and I'm present, your back is going to get scratched up and your neck. You just might get bit. But not in a sexual way. You try opening the door for somebody else and you don't open it for me. You try being nice and talking all, talking all smooth and, and, and talking all, you know, silent and, and, and almost whispering. 
But then when you ch talk to me, you change the volume of your voice. You're going to die today. Change the volume of your voice on me and see what happened. I'm going to come to you. <laughs> well, shout hallelujah. I'm not playing church. <laughs> you, 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 you change your volume. You, you talk to her in a soft voice and then didn't try to raise up on me and see what happened. <laughs> ask her how she doing and then don't ask me how I'm doing. I'm taking note. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Hmm. There you go. So now Hagar seems to have the upper hand. She's getting a special treatment. She's getting a special attention. And now Hagar is not only happy, but Hagar is hateful right now. <laughs> Hagar is hell on wheels from sun up to sunset. And Sarah's plan backfired in her face. The bright future turns dark. And the bright idea was not so bright after all. And now there's darkness in the home. Her beautiful plan has fallen through and begins to morph into something else. The plan didn't look like this when she planned it. Ooh, and that happens so often we can make a plan and then it looks so beautiful in the beginning and all of a sudden it begins to morph and, and say, this, this is not how I seen that, that, that taken out. I, I, ending, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that it was going to, but what did I miss? So now they're living in a living hell because she didn't, she didn't think the thing out. There were holes in her plan. It was a slap in her face. But we need to understand that we do not live in a fail-proof world. We do not live in a perfect one either. When things don't go as planned, guess what we do? We adjust, we adapt, and the majority of the time, we apply a scripture. I got to apply a scripture so I can cope with this. And Romans 8, 28 works all the time. <laughs> Glory to God. All things work together for the good. Hallelujah. For them that love the Lord, for those that are the called according to his purpose. So evidently, God, you must want me to go through this for some reason. And we got a cliche that we say it is what it is. Hallelujah. This is when we adjust and we accept the fact that we made a mistake or our decision was wrong and we say it is what it is because I don't want to. To incriminate myself. What can I do about it anyway? It's already done. This is the end result of leaning to her own understanding. Glory to God. That's why the Lord said, lean not to your own understanding. But acknowledge me in all your ways and I will direct your path. And there sometimes we can make some decisions and we don't have the divine understanding that we need. And we end up on a path and all of a sudden we don't even realize how we can help ourselves. And then we too then begin to be vengeful or we begin to have anger management problems. <laughs> because we are upset with ourselves but we need to understand that unexpected always happens and blind spots, spots are just that they are blind spots we are not as wise as God and we are not as wise as we think we are sometimes a wise woman the Bible says will build her house but that other one will tear it down piece by piece. She tore her house down. And so now when we come to verse 5 and 6, you might think that they're just having a conversation. But in real life, I think they was having a real life argument. And this real life argument is, is about the repercussions of a bad decision. It's about Abraham and Sarah. I think that maybe Hagar had went out shopping or maybe she was asleep or maybe she was in there cleaning. So Sarah begins to try to defend herself and say, was I really wrong? You know how it is when you know that you know that you know that you're wrong and then you try to make yourself, amen, not wrong. You want to shift the blame on somebody else. 
she says was, was you well my wrong be upon you Abraham I have given my maid into your bosom and when she saw me that she had conceived I was despised in her eyes look the Lord judge between me and thee it's your fault anyway you shouldn't listen to me huh? this is the flesh warring against the spirit this is the flesh that took dominion so I don't think they was having a nice little neat little conversation about Hagar and Abraham. I believe that this was a real life argument. I believe that the people next door could hear them. I believe, amen, when they were in the car, they was arguing. When they, wherever they went, they was arguing about Hagar. And I imagine that Hagar was in the house sometime and she could hear them talking about her. Have you ever been in a situation like that where you know that somebody's talking about you and then all of a sudden the conversation goes to a whisper? First they were talking all loud and everything and then now they're they whispering. No, you're talking about me. So she's uncomfortable in this situation. I can see her with the rag in the, in the, in the kitchen right now done rub the color off of the counter. Glory to God. Amen. Slamming dishes and, and slamming cabinets and glory to God and dropping stuff and, and making all kinds of noise in there because I know you in there talking about me and, 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 and something is getting ready to go down because I can feel the heat. I feel the heat in the house. I feel the contention in here. And I know it's about me and my pregnant self. So now Sarah shifts the blame on to, to Abraham and I love it because sometimes we don't think some men go clap back but Abraham clapped back and said I'm not going to be bothered with it. You deal with it. It's your handmaid and you're the one that did all this. So now we got confusion and there is no peace in this house. Peace has been escorted right out the door. And then all of a sudden now regulations change and there's a lot of rigmarole going on in the house. Whereas Sarah used to maybe help her to do certain things. Now she's not helping her anymore. Maybe they folded the clothes together. Maybe they, they washed the dishes together. Maybe they, amen, cleaned up the living room together. But now Sarah is probably messing the living room up, going in there and tearing the bathroom up. Leaving stuff everywhere. <laughs> Dropping stuff on the floor because it said that she then began to oppress and persecute Hagar. Start treating her bad. Dealing with her harshly. I, I don't know about you, but I've had individuals to do that to me. All of a sudden you pull back and you make it harder on me. All of a sudden, my task list change. All of a sudden, now I got 20 tasks. Now, verses 3. But now you're putting all of this labor on me. You're doing a Pharaoh on me now. And I'm pregnant. You already see what condition I'm in. I don't have no family. I don't have nobody I can depend on. I don't even have nowhere that I can run to. And this is when people begin to try to take advantage of you because they know that you cannot fight back or you won't fight back. So now I got all these tasks and now I'm getting mixed messages from you. You are confusing me. Sometimes when we get these mixed signals from people and unclear signals and, and, and contradictory words and inconsistent behavior, we try to justify why a person is doing what they're doing. In other words, we would rather just go ahead and take the pain, amen, just so that we can say that we have somebody to be with or we got a place to stay or we got a place to live, amen. This is better than having nothing. No, it's not. Tell your neighbor it's not better than having nothing. Living with mixed messages and, and confusion and, and the person has a, a dual personality and, and the person in private they're one way but in public 
there another way? I could see her taking, amen, Hagar to the store with her or, or wherever. And then uh, somebody says, well, is the baby kicking yet? And then Sarah says, yes, you know what the baby is doing, such and such and such. But we need to hurry along home and get rest because she needs to take it easy. But when they get home, she throws a task list out. That's a mixed message. I remember one time I was very young and, and I was working for a Caucasian lady and she gave me, I know I believe it to be about a hundred or two, three hundred to me. It was so many envelopes to put stamps on. I licked every last one of those stamps. And then after I got through, then she comes and shows me that little thing that they use where you just put the stamp on the, the water roll. What in the world? I was high as a kite my tongue was dry as cotton I was so mad at Miss Shooty that was her name I'll never forget her name but she always act like she liked me when all of the generals and everybody was around but then when everybody was gone out of the room her personality would change this was confusing to me because you should be helping me. You should be teaching me. You should be training me. But what you want me to do is you want me to fail. And I can just believe that whenever Abram would come home, Abram, Sarah would probably say, she ain't cleaned the dishes, but yet still you put more dishes and more dishes. Amen, I washed the more dishes you put back in there. I used to get my brothers and my sisters out, take their dishes and put them in the trash. Hallelujah. You're not going to play that game on me no more. Because you're doing something to me. You're making my job harder. So all that, all that Hagar could do was run. She couldn't take any more of trying to clean their sheets and, and fold their clothes and, and change their furniture and, and dust and, and clean the dirty toilet. Amen. And doing all of that stuff. So somebody say, run, Hagar, run. run Hagar. So Abraham couldn't come to her defense. She had no family. She had no friends. Amen. And the friends she thought she had is now her foe. She runs away because she couldn't stand the sight of Sarah, couldn't stand her face, couldn't stand the smell of her perfume, couldn't stand the, the, the voice, couldn't stand the glares, couldn't do none of that because you know what? I am pregnant right now and I know I can't even get with you. I want to do bodily harm to you, but I can't. <laughs> Don't play church with me. So... She gets out into the desert. She runs. How many of us have ever just ran away? Couldn't take no more. Had such a mental block you couldn't even think you jumped up and ran off like a horse. You know, and didn't know which way you was going. Just started going. But then on her way, the scripture says that she, she was found by a fountain of water in the desert. So that shows us there was more than one fountain in that desert. But as a matter of fact, the writer says that it was by the fountain and the way to Shur. It was a specific water fountain. And this was the direction that she was headed because right after Shur, she was on her way back to Egypt. <laughs> Hallelujah. But she stopped there to refresh herself. And a stranger interrupts her. And get this, calls her by name. Right there, the heavens have now been opened. Hallelujah. He calls her by her name and then he calls her, addresses her by her occupation. Sarah's maid. Right about now, I don't want to be Sarah's maid. And right about now, I don't even want to hear Sarah's name. Mm. Because sometimes you can be so regretful about things and so resentful towards people that when somebody says their name, it just tears you up on the inside. It does something to you on the inside and messes you up emotionally. Hallelujah for another 30 days. Amen. I don't even want to hear a name. Don't, don't. I don't want to hear a name. Don't call me by that name. So he asked her two questions. 
Not that she was lost. <laughs> Where are you coming from? Where will you go? How will you survive? You don't even have a purpose right now. Where, where is this taking you? So what he's saying to her is that what you have in mind is something that you need to reconsider. And somebody here today, you need to reconsider some things. And, and, and this is what people say because when they're running away from something and they, they want to be in another situation that they can handle, another situation that they can be comforted in, another situation, amen, where they're not, amen, challenged with so many things. But she answered him and she said, I am fleeing. I'm running from the face of my mistress. I cannot stand her no more. So this is her talking to a stranger. That's why the Bible says that we have to beware. At least we are entertaining an angel. And oftentimes we don't realize that it is an angel. But when the heavens are opened up and somebody calls your name and they know where you work, they know more about you. Hallelujah. You ought to realize that the heavens just opened up. And that the Lord is speaking directly to you. And that he knows where you are. And he knows what is on your mind. So she tells him, I, I, you know, I just got to get away from there. But then the last thing she needs to hear from the stranger is return to your mistress. That's the last thing I want to hear. Go back and submit yourself under her hands. Go back and be obedient. Go back and be humble. I'm mandating you to go back, but don't go back the same way you left. And I can see her saying, are you kidding me? You want me to go back and, 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 and subject myself to what I couldn't stand? But the Lord had to stop her. And this is salvation in motion. This is the love of God in motion. She could not survive, sure. Neither could she survive back in Egypt. Sure is interpreted as a wall. So the Lord made sure that she hit a wall before she got to the destination that she was going to. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. I don't know where you were on your way to or what you were thinking about doing, but the Lord said I had to raise up a wall to make sure that you don't go past sure. I got to make sure you don't do that. And this is how it sounds. Some people say I'm moving to Atlanta. Oh, I'm moving to Vegas. I'm moving. I'm going to Chicago. I'm going to Florida. I'm going to Frisco. I'm going where some happenings is. <laughs> She's out in the middle of nowhere. But the Lord had to turn her back around. He had to turn her back around so that there would be no regret. And see, this is why the Lord is sending this message. Because he says, I want to show you how remarkable I am in your life. Because you think that I'm not watching you. And you think that I'm not paying attention to you. You think that I don't care about what's going on with you in your life. But the Lord said, I want you to know that I do see you. And that I do know you're down sitting. I know you're uprising. I know your thoughts are far off. I know you want to run away. I know you want to get out of the situation. I know you want to get away from the person. I know you want to get out of the pain. But the Lord said, turn around. I need you to reconsider. Hallelujah. I want you to know that I know. And so if you do make it to sure, beyond sure, you're going to regret it. So I know that this stopped her. And the next question from her was, well, what's in it for me if I turn around or if I, or if I stay in it? How is this going to end for me? And so thank God she didn't walk away from the stranger before the conversation ended 
Because sometimes when the Lord tells us certain things, especially if it is the opposite of what we want to hear, we don't want to hear the rest. We want to shut down and we don't want to hear the rest of what he has to say. Or we believe that we've already heard enough and we don't tarry with the Lord. But God wants us to tarry with him. Glory to God. And so had she not tarried, she would have missed the rest of her life. But God didn't want her to miss the rest of her life. And I know that there's sometimes when you want to run away and you want to get away. But God said if you do you're going to miss the rest of your life. I don't want you to miss the rest of your life. I'm a remarkable God. And what I have planned cannot be undone. You can run if you want to. Hallelujah. But you're going to have to turn back around. Somebody shot hallelujah. You can be found at a place where you are refreshing yourself. God said I'm the one that led you to the fountain. I'm the one that led you to this place. I'm the one that led you to this well. I'm the one because you need a drink and you need a drink of me. You need a drink that will satisfy. You need a drink that will make you feel alright. You need a drink that will settle everything that's troubling your mind. Somebody say your mind needs to be put at ease. So God had to put her mind at ease. She had a turmoil going on in her mind. Oh, glory to God. And had she not listened to what was being said to her at the well, she would have missed the rest of her life. But I thank God because he knows how to intervene. I need the Lord to intervene in my life because I'm at a place where I know that if I keep on going, I don't know what's going to happen to me. If I keep on going, I'm going to lose my direction. If I keep on going, I'm going to end up hurting myself. If I keep on going, I'm never going to recover. If I keep on going, I'll never find my way. If I keep on going, I'm going to be miserable. If I keep on going, I'm going to be mad as ever. If I keep on going, I won't be able to do anything. If I keep on going, where am I going? Somebody say, I don't even know. Oh, glory to God. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how I'm going to survive. I don't know where I'm going to live. I don't know who's going to help me. I don't know. The Lord stopped her and gave her a promise. He said, Hey, you gotta go back. You gotta turn around and go back. Because lo, it is written in the volume of the book. What we don't understand is that our life is a volume. After we want to remove the pages from the script, somebody say, Deborah, that he wrote. He's the one that wrote the script that you're living. Hallelujah to God. He's the one that said, I know the plans that I have for you. Hallelujah. They are good and they will bring you to my expected end. Sometimes we don't want to finish the volume. We want to take the pages out. We don't want to go through. We want to say we're all right. We want to say I settle for this. But the Lord said don't settle. Hallelujah. Because that's not the end of it. Don't settle. Because I got a promise for you. You got to wait until the pages unfold. You got to wait until you say I see now why the Lord did that. You gotta wait until you say now I see why he sent me in that direction. You gotta wait until he says I know it's tricky but I got to play it. Hallelujah. You don't. Look at your neighbor and say you don't have a plan. You 
you don't have the plan. You think you know. You think you know me. But the Lord said, my ways are past finding out. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways are not your ways. You think that is doing you a disservice. But God said, I'm doing you a favor. Rema Sebehuria. Glory to God. Because left to yourself, you will destruct. Rakabashi. Hallelujah. Because I am the rock of your salvation. I am the ancient of days. I am he that was and who is and is to come. You got to realize here today, glory to God, that I am your salvation. And your salvation includes your deliverance. Your salvation includes me stopping you when I need to. Your salvation, hallelujah, includes me calling your name out of nowhere. Hallelujah. Your name, hallelujah, is on my lips right now. Your name, hallelujah, is in my mouth right now. Your name. Bless the name of God. Your name. Your name. Your name. It's on my heart. Your name is on my mind. It's not in the volume of your book. I'm not going to stand by. You're not going to break my heart. I'm going to show you I'm a remarkable God. You're not going to break my heart. You're going to turn around here. You know how you're on the freeway and you miss your turn. But then you say, I gotta turn around here. I can't go no further. God said, that's as far as I want you to go. I put a wall there. You're trying to get me on the wall. Stop trying to make something happen. God said, I'm not gonna let it. Because it's not in the plan and it's not in the volume of your book. Whew. It's not in the volume of your book. Right, right along in here, this page don't end like that. I need you to turn around. you to reconsider if talking to me is not enough to convince you but I want you to yield to me I don't want to have to force you to turn around because I sure can somebody shout hallelujah Lord you don't have to force me She didn't have to say, Lord, is that you? She understood. Because she had never seen God prove himself to her like that. Yes! He proved himself. He proved himself to her. The little Egyptian. The little handmaiden. The little nobody. He proved himself to her. He said,
said, I got something in store for you, girl. And, and see, Sarah made her feel so bad. Like you don't got nothing. And you don't got nobody. But the angel told her, there's so much more inside of you because once you birth Ishmael, there's a lot more coming after that. And people always talk about Ishmael. Yeah, we know that he wasn't the chosen seed, the chosen promise. But I gather that she probably said, I was the premature promise. And I thank God for using me to prove a point. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because sometimes the Lord needs to use those that are just common to prove a point to those who think they have the most faith. Yeah. I don't have no parents. But he saw me before he placed me in my mother's womb. I didn't have a job, but he saw me before he placed me in Pharaoh's house. He knew I was going to end up with the patriarch, Abraham and Sarah. And my purpose, now I see, was to prove a point about premature promises. Hi, I was chosen to show and prove a point the difference between the bond woman and the free just because you a free liberated woman that don't mean God is not going to bless me he just used me to prove a point he's a remarkable God so when you look back over your life and you see all of the things that have took place the disappointments and the joys the ups and the downs the trials and the tribulations those that accepted you and those that rejected you those that ran over you and those that mistreated you and those that called you out of your name and those that two times you those that did you wrong those that put you out in the call those that didn't mind you those that didn't care what they did to you those that talked about you like a dog those that wouldn't help you no more just tell them I meant to prove a point my life proves a point that God wanted to make to the world he is no respecter of person when you yield to him when you yield to him when you yield to him he's no respecter of person so she said have I also here looked after him that seeth me. I looked after him. In other words, I, I did something for him. He was looking at me, but I didn't know that he saw me, but he ordered my steps. Sleepless night, he ordered my steps. Fear of my future, he ordered my steps. Being a spectacle and people looking at my life, my life on display. publicly not knowing what I go through privately he 
saw me. He saw me taken. He saw me submit myself back to him. When everything in me was fighting. I ran away because I didn't have strength. But now that I know that I saw the one who sees me and I can't say sees me because he's always seeing me so he, 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 he saw me. Because he goes before me and he makes my crooked ways. straighten this out for you. I know it's a burden, but if you leave it here at the well today, you can go back and deal with any Sarah. You can go back and deal with any challenge. Because now that you see the one who sees you, you're going back a different way now. Unbothered. The peace of God that passes all understanding. You're not going to ruffle me anymore. I'm not going to allow you to. Because I saw the one who sees me. I saw the remarkable one. The one that I can talk about for the rest of my days. My testimony is so powerful that I can talk about it for a lifetime. Because I saw him who saw me. He saw me and everything that I did. He saw me. He's remarkable. Now I see why I ended up where I am. Now I see why I endured such an affliction. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, it hurt, but it don't hurt no more.
change your mind. I gotta change your mind.
prove the point, Sister Roxanne. He proved the point. No matter how ugly it was, Sister Cassandra. Stand ye therefore. With your loins girded about with truth. God has proven a point. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves me. I'm proving a point. What I went through, what you went through, what you're going through, huh? God has proven a point. She said, have I looked after him who saw me? In other words, I helped God prove a point. <laughs> Just to know that the Lord sees us in our affliction. that he would allow me to run to get some solace from somebody that's afflicting me or from something that is afflicting me. The angel told her, I know you're with child and I know you're carrying this. All of us are carrying something for the Lord told her you're going to bear that son and you're going to call his name Ishmael because the Lord has heard thy affliction and the thing is God hears our affliction without us sounding off he says I can be touched by the feeling of your infirmity and I can hear even unheard cries and unheard desires and unheard prayers that you haven't spoken out loud and, and prayers that you have not shared with anyone because they would not look at you the same but I thank God because he can look at us. We are naked before him. He said everything is naked before his eyes. He sees. <laughs> he said your son's going to be a wild man and everybody's going to be fighting against him. So it's a fight all the time. But hey, God, that's all right, because if I be for you, then who can be against you? But he's going to dwell right in the midst of his brethren that hate him for no cause. You might have to live that way, too. People just don't like you for no reason. But he said... She then said, I call him by another name. Thou God seest me. Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? And she named that well. The fountain turned into a well. Oh, I could preach this until the sun set. Oh, God. But when you, when you stop by to, to get a refreshing and you, and you just can't leave, until you're full she stayed there until she got full and she called it beer la haroi not beer like we think but she said it is between kadesh and bered read that up but it was a place where she could reflect back to the fact 
that she just stopped for a refresh a refreshing and got full and that's where he met her and when she left there she was overflowing she saw the living God she saw the active God and he showed her whoo, the scope of his plan let us stand thank you Jesus let's give God glory in the house of the Lord come on lift it up to him give him worship give him glory the altar is right there where you're at give, give him give him glory let him touch you just one time bye, 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 bye. going to focus on that we're going to focus on the one that saw us now let me not look at Sarah and hate her let me not look at Abram and get so bitter Give us the wherewithal, God, to share the space while we endure the affliction. You said that your burden, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So we don't go back the same way that we came today. They don't want to deal with us, God, but you had given us the anointing to deal with them. Hallelujah. Whether it's husband, wife, sister, brother, cuz, friend, neighbor, employer. Trying to make it hard on us while we are birthing something that we think or something that they think we don't deserve. Thank you for your intentions, God. that all things work together for good might not feel good but it's working for our good we give you glory in the house of the Lord we give you praise right here out of our own bosom we give you adoration God out of our mouth we bless your holy name give God glory give him praise hallelujah I'm going to live this thing out be somebody's inspiration be somebody's shero be somebody's influencer because when they look upon your life God has proven a point and they're saying if she could do that God strengthened me to endure what I have to endure not something I'm not talking about somebody going back getting their brains beat out or blown out you know when to step off then. You're not going to do me no bodily harm. I'm talking about something that God knows that you prematurely ran away from or in your mind you just didn't want to do it anymore. Hallelujah. There's a will there. And it's called a perfect will. Don't change the channel yet. And don't turn the page yet. Let God turn the page. 
you never know. I prematurely wanted to do a lot of things in my life. I prematurely didn't want Pastor Brown in my life. But had I not stopped at the well, I wouldn't be standing here today. There's a lot of things that you are not going to want to do. But God said you need to reconsider because that's not in the volume of your book. Or you may think you're on your way to Egypt to go back and be in the world. But God said, you're not that kind of girl. So I got to put a wall in, you, in your life. I have to, I, 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 I'm sorry I had to break your leg. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to grab you by the back of your neck. But I am your salvation. And when salvation needs to interrupt, salvation will. Your life is not your own. Your body is not your own. That's God's habitation. Mm. It's God's habitation. God, God lives in you. Not all of that depression. You said it earlier. They're trying to put you over in some kind of category. No, I'm not going that way. Unless you're going to give me a big check, I can't pretend like I'm crazy. <laughs> well, bless God. <laughs> you're going to get the money. <laughs> and I play crazy. <laughs> Anybody here that does not know the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior? Or maybe once upon a time you were bosom buddies with God and you said, I don't want to be with that. You know what? This is not working for me. And you need to return to the Lord. I pray for you today. I'm not going to put anybody on blast because I could right now. But I want you to come anytime during the day that we're here and you let me know. Be a private encounter. Sometimes we just like, you know what? Just say, people say, well, people don't come to the altar no more. Well, you know what? You can build an altar right there in that chair. You could get slain by the Spirit of God right there in that chair. You could be walking on your way to the bathroom and all of a sudden. But God said to you that you need to. When you leave here today, you go back another way. Don't go in that direction that you were going. And if you need to rededicate your life to the Lord, you let any one of us know one of these t-shirts with the statements on it they'll let you know what you need to do I know they're anointed glory to God less than we're gonna praise the Lord we're done for now we're getting ready to go eat our lunch isn't that all right let's give God praise let's give him praise let's give him glory We're going to be having our lunch and then we'll come back and later and do some announcements, Brother Media. Yes, this is, they're giving me the thumbs up. That everything is ready. Amen. I love you all. And we're going into the fellowship hall. No, to the left, my left, and outside. Okay. So, well, you just, Tracy will tell you where to go. Amen. Amen. But Father, we thank you today for this part that we have had and we know lord that there is another portion that you want to give unto us we pray even now father as we fellowship one with another that we know you're not through we father we thank you for those that have prepared the food for us for those that have given lord so that we would be able to enjoy this day without exchanging money oh we're so thankful god that we could just come in and enjoy you and enjoy one another. We thank you 
And Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that the anointing that is resting upon all of us will remain. Father, we bind any bad news. We bind anything that would disturb our peace. We bless your holy name. We bless you in Jesus' name. Put your hands together and praise the Lord. Amen. And we're going to make our way. They'll direct you. Amen. If you just go into the lobby, they will direct you to where you need to go for lunch. Amen.